Hello guys, welcome at the campus party. You can totally check the slides and I am recording this because oh, when you do the live stream, you don't see your audience. And in that way, I can present better quality video. So I will be in the chat. I will read the comments. You can always message me. I'm always welcoming all sorts of uh, feedback. And in the meantime, this is the most important thing that we can do. Emission trading system and free allocation. We can agree the climate change is for real. We can agree it's man-made. We can agree it's very dangerous for the future of society, humanity, culture. And the way how we do our emissions, greenhouse gases, is not very cool. It's actually leading to inequality and destruction. You can see a couple of different models, such as polluter pays or maybe equality. Uh, but the way how we do this now is that grandfathered allocates basically those who were rich, wealthy, got plenty of pollution in the past. Oops, uh, these guys are now have the same allowances as they had. That's why the global south and the developing countries are not favored in that way. I think that this is the simplest, the one thing that can completely rewrite the economic foundation. And I think that the existing system of grandfathering, inheriting the permits to pollute is totally not acceptable. This single thing can completely rewrite the entire economy of the entire planet. And right now I will play the, a great video by Sustainable Human and Daniel Schmachtenberger. Rival risk dynamics multiplied by exponential tech self-terminate. Exponential tech is inexorable. We cannot put it away. So we either figure out anti-rivalry or we go extinct. The human experiment comes to a completion. That's the core thing. Economics is our value system codified as value equations that determines how much we value one thing relative to another thing, that determines what we're incentivized to do and what we confer power to. So if a dead whale is worth a million dollars on a fishing boat and a live whale in the ocean is worth nothing, that's a value system codified in a value equation that then incentivizes behavior, but it also incentivizes psychopathy. So I have to kind of deaden to be able to do the thing that is incentivized by the system. Or somebody else does and I'm just not effective in the system. If you look at the way economics then needs to protect its own profit stream and the way it will learn how to influence media to control people's sense-making frameworks, and the way it will influence governance, or the way it will influence legislation on the nature of what happens in education to prepare people for the workforce. So you can't think about the evolution of human consciousness and the evolution of economics differently. The paradigm shift is basically everything. I was at the United Nations COP24 climate change conference. I've literally lost the hope because these people are great negotiators, politicians, debaters but they know too little about uh, game theory, behavioral economics. They, I just, I just couldn't find anyone who have any idea how to do it. However, there are people who are using data-based approach and science. This is the lady who won the Nobel Prize in economics. And she won the prize because she used the data-based approach for helping others. We can agree that malaria and mosquitoes are not okay. So you may think that you can subsidize the mosquito nets so that children and adults are safe. However, if you give them for free, the people will use them as a fishing net. So various experiments to establish an optimal price point so they can afford to pay and also appreciate them. Similar experiments with uh, vaccination. Uh, you can run 
experiments and you can try various things such as how do you incentivize uh, adults and children to get vaccinated and similar experiments with schooling what do you do do you give food at school do you give a sack of rice food to take home do you do uniforms and apparently educating parents on the benefits of education provides the best return of investment when it comes to educating children. I think that this is exactly type of mindset, data, science, experiments, trying things out, running large scale experiments to see what sticks. I am worried, I am genuinely worried that this is the model of democracy, which is ancient Greece and a few guys you know, voting, debating, the model of democracy didn't change in many, many years. These are the founding fathers, the Declaration of Independence, the uh, 1776, when the information was traveling at a speed of a horse, or maybe the ship was actually faster, you know, a couple of weeks from London to the US. Now we have a few things that are different. We have internet, which is a game changer. We have blockchain, which is game changer. We have AI, we have so many other exponential uh, technologies. I think we can totally rewrite the economic system for the humanity, uh, which I am doing right now. We are doing this. Everyone who is in this channel, who is tuning in, we are system changers, game changers. We are trying to figure out what type of changes are practical, applicable, meaningful. Let's see where this road continues. Internet and blockchain game changers in terms of decision making, how we organize knowledge, how we share our data, how we share our research. And also flying to Mars is kind of out of ordinary. I think that every single generation up to this date was uh, thinking we are the most sophisticated, we are the most advanced, we are the best, the most sophisticated, right? However, flying to Mars is something truly out of ordinary in the scale of the entire uh, species, civilization, humanity. This is one of the most breakthrough moments and I am 100% with Elon. We have a narrow window of the opportunity. Uh, the, some of the geopolitical processes, uh, nuclear warfare and whatnot, we may not have many chances. We need to use this chance. And another reason why everything is so hmm, different these days are feedback loops. Of course, if you are into climate change, you know all of them. Uh, one of the most common one is called uh, albedo effect, where white polar cover reflects heat and the dark ocean water absorbs heat. Another very well known is like forest fires, that there is less trees and more CO2 generated from the fire. There are many of them, plenty, too many to to elaborate in more details, but it is, it is looking ugly. And I want to say that for me, it was never about a polar bear losing habitat. Uh, this is an example from Syria, you know, drought, famine, not enough water, not enough food, people migrating to cities, livestock uh, dying. And in the cities, wow, there is no economy, no job, no future. People are angry. The civil warfare is created by climate change. And this is just, just, the, just the beginning. I think it was like a window into the future. Uh, various estimates. Of course, it will not happen all at once. It will be a, a significant uh, process over the next couple of decades. I think that um, it is happening right now. We are just having a window into the future, just like uh, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter. It was just like a little 
time machine, time travel, seeing what can happen if there is a massive inequality, massive wealth and distribution, when people are so frustrated, when they have no resources. This was the terrifying moments, riots on the streets, looting, police cars on fires. I think it's just, okay, this is what can happen in the future. And I agree with Leo, I agree with previous president. I do not agree with the current president, who is a climate change denier. That is actually a very dangerous uh, situation. Climate change denial is effectively a fake news. And usually, most of the time, I am 100% pro free speech. Like freedom of speech is fundamental human right. However, say if you are a pedophile, you do not have freedom of speech to seduce a five years old, right? This is, there are certain extremes. And I actually think that fake news, especially when treated as psychometric data misuse, uh, hybrid warfare, mass media propaganda deployed towards vulnerable civilian population, uh, then it's actually uh, classified as weapon. The Cambridge Analytica technology has export restrictions because it's classified as a weapon. And when I say vulnerable civilian population, I only know some data that on average humans spend, you know, three, four, five hours on front of the TV. And I personally, in my social circles, I do not know anyone who has TV uh, other than a few guys like uh, developers who have a cheap 4K monitor on the wall, like a dashboard, uh, you know, uh, different graphs, metrics, monitoring. So we are here in this little filter bubble and uh, maybe we are not affected. Maybe we are a higher income, higher education. I am very grateful for my privilege. I am not taking this for granted. I am very grateful for everything I have. At the same time, I have only one vote and my vote is... Okay, uh, let's figure out a better model. Let's figure out a better model and let's figure out what can we do to avoid fake news and what can we do to align humanity? What can we do as small little, little changes to align? I think that uh, we can totally think what actually helps. I think that uh, having one child less is absolutely orders of, of magnitude. And uh, many researchers cannot use the word population control. Population control sounds very ugly. Population control. However, you, what you can do, you can educate on sexual health. Uh, in many countries, you can l give away condoms. And if contraception, which is another word for preventing pregnancy, not having children is prohibited by religious reasons, then you can just educate on health. If you cannot prevent pregnancy uh, for yeah, various religion reasons, then educating women on health, educating boys on health, and also educating in general, because if woman has income, she's less willing to be a victim of a domestic uh, rape, right? If a woman has enough income to walk away from an abusive guy, then uh, chances are she will be strong, independent, empowered. And I will not use the word population control because it's not politically correct, but the data says that actually having uh, less children is uh, good for the environment. I think that a lot of things here are completely, completely greenwashing. It's like, yeah, I'm doing my part, uh, which is dangerous. A lot of people would be willing to make much higher personal sacrifices. Okay. Ah, uh, sacrifices. It's not a real sacrifice. It's just, uh, okay, I do not have to fly. I will have a Zoom call, right? It changes everything. However, they have this feeling, oh, I recycle or I use a light bulb, right? It is, it is wrong. 
I think we need to change the change the messaging. This was, you know, in the 50s, in the 60s. Your doctor suggests camels. And now we can agree that uh, smoking tobacco is not okay. And uh, Elon Musk, it, it is probably one of the most retweeted tweets of Elon that the cannabis went from criminal felony time in jail into something which is essential, which is open during the pandemic. I have certain views about war on drugs. I am on the side of uh, facts, research, data, uh, freedom of thought. I am against uh, mass media propaganda of the 60s and I'm not supporting war in Vietnam. However, in order to keep the war in Vietnam, they had to arrest uh, peaceful movement leaders. So now we are 50 years later and yeah, I agree that the drugs can also have negative consequences if they are of the illicit quality, uh, unknown quantity, unknown purity, if they are administered by someone who has no experience in an irresponsible way and then there is no uh, recover integration session, then yes, drugs can be also bad. At the same time, uh, the war on drugs is a failure. And uh, I'm actually hoping that uh, this will help you understand why there are so many people in jail. This is a good business. Uh, I, I think that uh, putting people to jail for cannabis off offenses is a very low <laughs> customer acquisition cost. Yeah, I'm just using irony and sarcasm here. But when you when you just put some economy in place, you say, oh, now the, this particular plant is a crime and then you put profit. Uh, people are entrepreneurs and not everyone has impeccable ethics. Some people are profit driven and uh, I think that it, that it drives innovation, like someone who is selling uh, these little masks, right? There's supply and demand, entrepreneurs respond, and uh, yeah, here we go. Prison industrial complex. That leads to a lot of crazy, 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 crazy behaviors, such as putting uh, kids to correctional facilities. Uh, there was some uh, judge who was bribed he, he was paid to send people to jail uh, because uh, he was, uh, yeah, he was paid for that. Another, uh, I, I mean, outrageous, outrageous example is, ooh, if you are the uh, paramedic, you are the paramedic, but you get paid for tipping off the funeral home. So then as a paramedic, you are actually kill your patients because if you report to your conspirator in a funeral home, you get extra charge, which is completely morally, utterly not acceptable. But this is just an example. Change the equation, change the economy, incentivize something else, and here you go. I think that this is, this is huge. This is huge. Uh, the way how we subsidize uh, water, subsidize meat, subsidize plants. This is just I unacceptable. This is huge, unacceptable thing. The way how much money goes towards something which is uncool. It has been criticized on the grounds of its cost and environmental impact. And I couldn't agree more. I believe that the market can respond. The private prison system is an extreme example, right? Where, who is your customer? Ooh, people in jail. Now, I would say that 1% or less than 1% of beef farmers and food farmers are effectively deciding on the fate of humanity. I think that the land use is fundamental, the way how we store water, uh, what type of crops are growing. This is very, very bad. And also energy subsidies. Again, market can decide. Like right now we just have, you know, solar panels, plentiful, plenty of cheap solar panels. But what about energy storage? 
if you cannot transmit this energy, if you cannot keep it in the winter or in the night, you still need to grow, grow, build fossil fuels, right? So they are on and off. I think that the free market can decide. Free market, entrepreneurs, people who have, you know, smart resources, capital, they can respond to market needs. But if the government decides to destroy the market, I think it's effectively destroying the market. Energy cannot be so cheap. Uh, we should value the cost of heating, cost of electricity. Uh, that would enable loads of innovation in the material. It would change the building codes. I, I am just worried that the lawmakers, policymakers are lagging a couple of years behind the reality. And uh, I just, I'm not talking about anything extreme. I'm just saying, okay, let's just remove artificial subsidies so that free market entrepreneurs, innovators can play an equal game. If you have a subsidies to all this stuff, then mm, it just doesn't pay off to be cool, doesn't pay off to be innovative because someone else got shitloads of money and uh, it's difficult. I think that we need to change loads of laws. And this is an, a screenshot from Economist. And here is, uh, I actually, this is the little fragment. China has every right to do so. Why do we assume that if you have, have a river, you can extract all the water from the river? And here are some links to Wikipedia. Uh, check them out. The war on water, six day war. It was between Israel and Egypt and other Arabic countries. It was massively influenced by, by water. Water in California, which means California, you know, first settlers, gold rush. It was wild west. It was in the 1800s, right? And the same water rights that were valid with no, almost no human population, you know, a few vagons, a few, you know, horses, right? The same law on, on water are applicable right now. And we need to change a few laws and we don't assume that just because something was in the past 1800s before you know, urban, suburban sprawl like LA, we need to change a few laws. And uh, I'm hoping that this presentation was informational, that it inspired you to, to think about a few, a few things. I'm not saying that I have 100% confidence. I just know that, oh, something doesn't work we need to change it. Talking about changing it is like, hmm, yeah, yeah, we need to change, we need to change, but do what? I'm actually trying to present a few easy, specific, actionable, attainable, like easy to understand. A lot of people are aware of what's going on. A lot of people say we need to change. I believe we need to change, but what to do exactly? That's why I wrote this book and I try to present, like, even if you don't read the entire book, because who reads the entire book? Three points, seven words, land use, which is related to animal agriculture and the amount of uh, cow feed. This is all, all related. Second, emission trading system, so it doesn't use the grandfathered, inherited allowances so that there is equality. I think that the equality would allow Global South to progress because they have less emissions. So they would uh, do market would be established. There is already market for CO2 emissions, but it's not unified. It's not integrated. It is all messy. And of course, energy storage, because even if you have a solar, solar plant, uh, it only works when there is uh, sun exposure. It doesn't work during the night. I think that these are the most applicable, the most imminent changes that we can implement right now. We are literally unfolding a new world, new world order. Guys, 
Thank you so much. I really wanted to present the most important, most actionable, most important parts. I hope it was good. Drop me a line. Let's keep in touch. You will always find me in the interwebs. And right now I'm just signing off. Ciao, ciao.